Hi, in the previous video we were talking about the hamming distance exercise in Ruby. In that video I presented my, my position about why I think that there should be more domain separation between two, two specific things. And I, I realized in that video that at some point that there is nothing about DNA being specific to Hamming distance. And this led me to the realization that Hamming distance is a separate bounded context, while DNA is another bounded context. And the DNA as a bounded context, this sounded pretty good to me. So I stayed with that and I implemented this bounded context as a Ruby module. However, the Hamming distance, this sounded a little bit too specific for me as a bounded context. So again, I went to Wikipedia and learned more. Uh, I'm not becoming a domain expert here. I just, I'm just grabbing some knowledge and I'm trying to, to improve my domain knowledge here. And there's this Hamming distance Wikipedia page. And it actually starts with saying that Hamming distance is part of information theory. And this is a huge topic. It's a branch of applied mathematics, electrical engineering and computer science involving a certain kind of things. I'm, I don't really want to go to everything here. I studied computer science, so I have some knowledge about it, but it's not something that I'm really using every day. As for now, I, I, I need to be okay with that, that I will never be a domain expert exactly, but at least I can improve. So I think that information theory is a better bounded context name than Hamming distance, which is a very specific thing. Hamming distance sounds more like one of the functions of existing in the information theory. So why don't, why should I rename it? And that's what I did. And in the previous video I left with just some waving hands how the bounded context will look like, uh, while here I want to show you the, exist, the code actually which implements it. Before I show the code, I just want to say that I extended the test with one another thing. I told you before that the DNA code should consist only of, sp from, of specific letters. So I added a new test which raises, I expect to raise argument error when there are some letters which are not really correct from the DNA point of view. This, this, this helps me to make this separation a bit uh, less artificial than, than it is right now. Okay, let's go to the implementation. You can see the view and the structure in RubyMine. I have the Hamming module that's required by the exorcism and I didn't want to change the existing public API. So this, this was required, this is just a class. And here I have two modules and they represent bounded context. In the DNA I have nucleotide, I have strand and I have incorrect DNA code, which is an exception. In the information theory I have an exception called different lengths and I have a function called Hamming distance. And it's all in one file. So usually I would prefer to have uh, different files for different bounded contexts, but in here it's so artificial and so short that it's okay to have one file. So, but it's worth mentioning here that the physical separation, like whether it's different files, whether maybe they could be gems, they actually every module here could be a gem. Uh, but it doesn't matter from the conceptual point of view, from the domain knowledge, for example. So this is just a physical separation, whether there are different files, different gems, or different microservices. This is the physical infrastructural uh, separation and not re doesn't really matter in the conceptual thing. So in the analysis, in the object-oriented design, and so on. All right, so I left this humming.compute function, that was the public API. And in here, I'm, impl I'm initializing strands. They have a new uh, factory method from, for, for creating them. It's just, you know, splitting this and creating nucleotide. And the one place which I changed now is that I am raising an incorrect DNA code, which is uh, declared here. If the possible DNA bases don't fit the current base that was passed. So those are the possible DNA bases as I understand from the tests. So that was my extension. So I'm implementing it here. As you see, it can raise incorrect DNA code. So I'm wrapping it in begin, rescue, and, 
and in case of incorrect DNA code, I'm raising argument error. And that's what I expected in the test. And that's that's enough. So it's a common pattern that between different layers, between different, like this is more like an application service, like this is more like uh, specific functions in the um, in the dom in the subdomains, uh, we can rewrap uh, argue different exceptions. So this can raise an exception, and I'm wrapping it here and raising another exception required by by the public API. If this was all cool, I have two strand objects, and now I can pass them to the information theory Hamming distance function, but I'm not passing them directly, I'm serializing them to strings. And this is because I don't really want to have this module knowing anything at all about DNAs. It's nothing about DNA, it just takes, it's even very specific in the Wikipedia design that it operates on strings. So that's totally okay for me to operate on strings, the only logic here is to raise an exception, again, I'm catching it here and raising argument error. And then if, if all is fine, I'm using that zip function that was uh, that is basically helping us with grouping those two arrays together and count the number of differences. And that's it. It's still a very small example, it's all very artificial here, but at least it's, it's possible here to explain the idea of different uh, modules and different bounded contexts. So just to summarize, we have the DNA bounded context, we have the information theory bounded context. They could be used from whatever other place, but they are used from this Hamming that compute method, uh, which is just wrapping. This is this is like the facade. And the nice thing was that I could uh, do a whole, all the whole refactorings uh, while being green all the time because the tests are fine and the tests are actually at a nice higher level, so they're not very specific to whatever class I have here. I don't have a class test for strand. Strand is not a unit here. Uh, I treat the whole thing as a unit at this level. And I think that's also a, a, an important topic to not to cement your design or cement your classes with your, your, with your tests too much. So it's better to treat a unit a bit uh, something a bit more than just a class. Thanks for watching the video and I encourage you to subscribe to the RKNC channel on YouTube. We'll post more videos like that, like this one very soon. Thanks.